It's good to see you again, thank you. Um, I really enjoy being with you. Um, and when we prepared this, uh, this uh, presentation, we always thought like it's meeting good old friends for a long, that we haven't seen for a long time. So I'm a little bit uh, excited. I think I lost all my presentation skills. You will see if this is the truth or not. Um, but when you haven't met for a long time and you see good old friends, the first thing that you probably do is just chatting, 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 chatting. And all of a sudden you realize, okay, it's 2 a.m. We only have 20 min minutes for today, so not until 2 a.m., but at least I can share with you uh, the most important stuff because when you meet Golo friends after a long time, the first thing that you want to know is what happened during that time? What were your experiences? What drove you during that time? And from our part, um, it's pretty easy to tell you what drove us in the past, what drives us today, and what will drive us in the future. It's you, actually. Um, and the first thing I wanted to uh, say today is just a big, big thank you to all of you, our valued customers, users, partners all over the world, because you are the ones that make us progress with your feedback, with your feature requests. So um, when it comes to what drove us, we always listen to you. We are a customer-centric company, and um, this is what it's going to be all about today. Um, and this is why letting you drive us has always been a good experience in the past. By the way, um, I think it's about 52,000 installs already, so by the time we created this presentation, it went up slightly. Um, so no, no other app in the adolescent marketplace has more positive re reviews than we have, more installs than we have. And this is for a reason, because we kind of guessed that you requested and you got what you requested for in the past. So what did you request for? A short wrap-up. You requested for a Confluence embedded solution that enables you to visualize stuff, especially technically driven use cases, your business cases. Um, so to say like um, modeling uh, use cases, BPMN 2.0 is only one example of these, or just showing entities between, or relationships between entities, sorry to say, um, or visualize your org charts, your workflows, and this can go on and on and on and on and on. Until the end, this is a very, very often used example floor plans, etc. cetera. No, you're probably sitting there and saying, Bastian, you're talking for, let me, let me have a look, for five minutes already. And I totally agree, this has been part of my presentation in 2019. So this is stuff that you all know already. This is why you value and why you, of course, love Dryo, because this is what we did in the past, technical diagramming, that's where we're strong at. But now, addressing the elephant in the room, what happened in the past two years, why didn't we meet in person? It's because of a pandemic. And um, during the pandemic, there was there were one very huge challenge that we all had to go through, switching from our office desk to our dining room table. Not having our second screen, we got that two weeks after, but until then we were pretty unorganized sitting there at this table. I'm just kidding. The desk was the least problem. Um, I think, think the biggest challenge was just how can we enable our, that our teams can keep on collaborating. And um, I mean, this collaboration, mode work, this was a trend that has been around before, but which we were talking about, I think, 10 to 15% of teams working remotely. Overnight, it went from 15% to 100%, and all of the solutions that were, for example, offering digital whiteboarding, they skyrocketed. So the feedback, as I just said before, we're a customer-driven company. Your feedback was, when are you going to have digital whiteboards that we can collaborate on inside of Drawio? And um, just to make it real short, this is what we did. So um, how many of you already used our new board editor feature? None of you. OK, you have oh, one, at least one. So uh, after my presentation, you all want to do that. Um, but you are familiar with our diagrams editor, aren't you? Yeah, you are. So if you are familiar with our diagrams editor and you see that, you see, OK, that is significantly reduced. Yes, it is, because we wanted to provide you with the thing you requested for, a digital whiteboard. So keep the space that you have available at a maximum level. And you see, for example, I don't know if you can see it, but for example, the format panel that in the diagrams editor is always visible on the right, you can now collapse and expand it. You, the shape uh, menu is very significant, it's also significantly reduced. You can also collapse and expand it. I will show that to you and I will demo it to you in the afternoon when we have our hands-on session. Um, and we also will work on exactly this example. 
Um, but for now, um, the most important thing for me is to say, I always say board editor. I'm not saying board app. Why do I say that? Because our new board editor is part of the Drawio Diagrams for Confluence app. This is not a separate app. It's embedded in the Drawio Diagrams app that you all know and love. Why is this the case? Um, I, I, maybe you think, why do you have two editors inside one app? I can, I can tell you because the feedback was, Look, we know that Drawio is very strong on technical diagramming. Um, like the diagrams editor, this is what it can do. It's, it's on the focus is on documentation. The focus is on being audit proof. The focus is on just have, having to deal with very technical oriented use cases. Like I mentioned before, BPMN, ERD, UML, all these standardized modeling language examples, network architecture. This is where we have always been strong. But now we doubled the value of Drawio overnight that it can provide to you and also go into this collaboration section that we enable you to collaborate in meetings, brainstormings, retrospect, even retrospectives you can now do inside of Confluence, inside of Drawio with the new board editor. So we combine the two most important use cases that are there in visualization inside of Confluence. How does it look like? Again, hands on session in the afternoon, but of course I want to provide some examples uh, with you, for you. This, for example, is a dynamic facilitation template that we created. So like you can do it in the diagrams editor too, you can uh, select templates that they have, have uh, created before and just use it for dynamic team processes. Um, in agile teams, that's a very common thing for meetings. Or, and this is, to be honest, people said I shouldn't share it, but I really like that feature. Um, we also do have a freehand editing mode. This is our new brush editing mode. I really like it. The hand drawing could be better. I definitely need to improve on the O. Um, the H is pretty decent. The E, L, L, oh, and the O is crap. But um, you can now also use it to just draw on a whiteboard, which is also pretty handy. It's not all about inserting shapes, connecting them, etc. So what I didn't say before, all of the features that you know from the diagrams editor are also embedded in the board editor. It's just like the default settings are different. You probably see there's no grid. Of course, you can activate a grid, but it's not there by default. But there are a few other settings that are there by default that the diagrams editor don't have has per default. So it's just a matter of taking different directions, different use cases, um, and collaborate on whiteboards. So, as always, Nadine just told me 10 minutes left. I'm way too fast. <laughs> this is my last slide already. Uh, but we can spend uh, 10 minutes on this slide and your questions as long as they don't spoiler the afternoon session. Is your logo uh, head to head with Miro and Miro? Yeah. yeah, we call it the solution that shall not be mentioned. Um, the, internal, the internal name is Lord Voldemiro. Um, no, of course, I mean, to be honest, like I, like I said, these digital whiteboarding solutions skyrocketed. And of course, Miro was the, the, the premium solution. It skyrocketed the most. Yeah. But um, this is exactly why we said you are requesting digital whiteboarding solutions like we're, Miro can do. They come from collaboration. We come from technical diagramming. And we, of course, want to move inside that area. So um, the most two important features that we got from our customers, I can't share with you yet because they told me to have some kind of a cliffhanger for the afternoon session. Um, but be prepared, there will be a lot of pr surprises, plot twists, friends turn into enemies, enemies turn to friends. Um, no, just kidding, a hands-on session. But this will be part of the hand hands-on session, so make sure to attend it uh, at 5 o'clock, if I'm not mistaken. Should we expect any price interviews? Not so far. <laughs> no, it's, it's, again, it's part of the Drawio app. There are diagrams for Confluence, um, and it's a dynamic market, yes, but for now I can tell you, no. <laughs> yeah. I'm here, Matt. I'm here. <laughs> Thank you, Jan. Um, the more we explore Confluence, Confluence apps, um, especially visual apps, like the one that shall not be named, there's a lot of concerns around accessibility for those folks who have visual impairments, uh, who are using screen reader devices. Has there been a lot of time spent on accessibility for the draw IO solution? Is that something you're thinking about in the future? Um, I ask for friends. <laughs> you ask for friends. <laughs> okay, um, the topic of accessibility is of course something you can discuss it on this level. 
And on this level, you can never do enough for accessibility. Of course, uh, we, we do our best to not only have a, a, an accessible solution now, but also progressing it in the future. So we have the bot edit editor since September. And uh, since that very day, of course, we keep on adding not only features, but also, also making it more accessible. And due to the fact that we originate from the open source uh, market, where, of course, with DiagramsNet, there's also an open source solution for desktop and for browser, etc. So uh, we have a large community that takes care of these topics. So um, it's a good question, to be honest. From a technical perspective, I can't tell so far because I'm only a marketing and sales guy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, this is definitely something that we, that we can take along. But fr from, from the perspective of our dev team, I can, I can tell for sure that it's always something that we look into. Hi. Um, talking Hi. about handwriting, um, my question is, uh, do you always have to use the mouse for that? Or do you have some clever solution connection to an iPad maybe so you can actually use it? You can use it on mobile devices too. But, but to be honest, my handwriting on a mobile device is even worse than with a mouse. So the, 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 the example that you just saw, this one, uh, this has been drawn with a mouse. The brush function, functionality is pretty decent. OK, thank you. <laughs> Like uh, at the tennis, you know, when they grab the ball. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you get these questions so many times, but uh, what's the main difference between Glyphy and Draw.io? Uh, you showed us this new interface. This is a very unique sales point, but uh, there is any more else? Is there any more else? Are there any more else? I mean, um, talking about the board editor, of course, this is 50% more features than Glyphy can, can do at the moment. Last time I checked, they weren't able to do boards or digital whiteboarding. Um, of course, we share, we, we share kind of the, the same approach to visualization. The editors are pretty similar, of course, yes. Um, I think one big uh, issue is always security, for example. Um, we take a lot of, uh, we, we do a lot of investment into security. Um, this might, I just saw we have an, only f uh, f five minutes left, but for everybody who's inter interested in that, we can spend the, uh, the, 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 after the, the noon uh, break for discussing that. For example, we don't only offer data residency, we only, uh, also offer data governance. So from our security approach, we are the top of the pops, to be honest. You can't do more in cloud at the moment. This is something what differs us. And um, I could also tell one more thing, but that would be actually a spoiler for the afternoon session. So attend the afternoon session, and then I will, I will answer your question again. And then okay. this will be the, the big one. Uh, but again, they told me I, I'm not allowed to share that secret with you I, now. If you let me, I have one more question. Yeah, sure. Uh, about pricing, do you mind to uh, hire your pricing or raise your pricing? Because uh, in difference with Glyphy, your prices are much more lower. Yes, they are, actually. And I mean, are talking, you planning to raise it? Um, I mean, talking about pricing, it's always, of course, we also have to, for example, shift our resources. At the moment, our resource, of course, the focus is on cloud. It is. I can't, I can't tell anything else. But um, we always see if all the investments that we have in cloud can be taken from a technical perspective to server and data center. So if this is possible, we do it. But at the same time, I mean, you probably all know there are three deployments to take care of, and we have to make sure that every, each deployment is going to be actively supported. So um, by the time we see that we have to increase prices, of course, we will do that if we have, if we have to. If you're asking why are you so significantly uh, uh, inexpensive compared to Glyphy, I would say that's because our founders believe that this is what the use case of visualization is worth. Um, I always tell that it's not us being inexpensive, in, inexpensive it's Glyphy being expensive. Um, and if you say, okay, um, in average, it's, we have one-fifth of the price that you pay for Glyphy. But then, shall we become more expensive um, to match the price of Glyphy? Or shall we just say, look, um, we are the, a solution that will suit your needs, and we believe that this is what the use case is worth, and then we just do it. So that would be my, my answer to you. One minute left. Last questions. Uh, does Draw.io work with the guest account feature in Confluence? As in if I want to share a whiteboard across outside clients? 
Uh, guest account feature. That's a pretty, pretty, that's a good question. Um, I can't answer it so far. My, my guess would be yes. Uh, we can test it. Um, I, I, I don't think why it shouldn't be possible, but again, testing is better than assuming. <laughs> so let's, let's do that after the presentation. Thanks. Any more questions? Okay, then thank you and see you all in the afternoon.